everybody and welcome back to another life in the spirit my name is david furrow on the end there we got craig we got joe and again we have the privilege of having my dad lynn furrow and uh you know last week we did things a little different talking about the difference between life in the spirit life in the word you know making sure that we're on point that we are not our primary focus i mean it is a primary focus but making sure our foundation is built on the word and then on top of that, a building brick is life in the spirit as well. And so one of the things that we didn't get into was the Mount of Transfiguration in uh, Second Peter. And so I say we just dive right into that and uh, go from there. I think your analogy of our, our faith and our practices are built upon the word. And so... Uh, you know, God has a life for us to live, and it is a spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-formed life. And so um, everything that we do, everything that we say, that we say is an expression of Christ's life, a life in Christ, is, is to come out and be informed by that which is written in the Word of God. And I want to go to a passage of Scripture in Second Peter chapter 1, and... I encourage you to maybe read and study this passage of Scripture. And I'm not going to read it all because it's a lengthy passage. But in verse 16 through 21 of chapter 1 of 2 Peter, Peter is describing uh, to the people that he was writing this letter to about a personal but subjective experience that he had with two other apostles, James and John. And Jesus had invited them to come up on what is now known as the Mount of Transfiguration because of the event that occurred there. And the Transfiguration was where Jesus, in a moment of time, was transfigured before them. And I, I call it, it's when eternity broke into time. Amen. And they saw Jesus in a way that they had never seen him before. And they saw his eternal glory. They saw who he was. That, that was divinity put on display before them. And Peter said that what they witnessed there was his, his garments were ch changed. And they said that his being was like the sun shining in his strength. Uh, one translator translation said it was like the continual uh, roll of lightning and thunder, and can you? And I've been around some close calls where lightning struck close to me, but can you imagine continual flashing of that type of brightness of light? And what an awesome experience! Yeah. I would love yeah. to have yeah. Jesus transfigured in front of my own eyes and behold that type of glory and to have whatever of my sin nature that is still in me be scared out of me <laughs> because <laughs> I guarantee Amen. you Thank those you. boys were shaken oh yeah, for sure for sure and not only was Christ transfigured before them but then there was this voice of the father that intimately speaks over the son and says this is the one I love this is the one that I, pleases me, I delight in. I want you to hear what he has to say. Mm. Now, you and I, if we had that privilege, mm. we would have come down off of that mountain, transformed and transfigured as well. Yes. Yeah. That glory that was revealed to them, I believe changed them for the rest of their life. Any questions they had about Jesus of Nazareth, who he was, what the opinions were about him, I think all of that was clarified. Yes. Yep. That, that he was the son of the living God. He was God made flesh. And there was no questions. But in this passage of scripture, Peter says this. He said, we beheld his glory. And this majesty was unveiled before us. But then he says something very strange. He said, even though I was an eyewitness to that type of glorious majesty, he said, every one of us as believers have a more sure word. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And he says, that sure word, 
bigger and better than a Mount of Transfiguration experience <laughs> is the Bible that you and I hold in our hands. Yeah. He said, because this written word was something that was breathed out by God and God anointed men and they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Just like being carried downstream by a stream of revelation of the knowledge of God. And they pinned forth various location, various men, uh, various occupations over a 1500 year period. But so God inspired and breathed out the word of God. Yeah. And, and so, again, when we talk about subjective experiences, I had a dream or I had a vision or God gave me an impression or I have a word. All those things are powerful. And if you've ever had any of those things that I just described, man, it rocks you. And you it, go, it God does. just spoke to me. You know, little old me. You know, I felt like God gave me a, a, a word or I had this dream from the Lord and, and I knew it was from God when I, when I uh, awakened from my slumber. I, I knew that God had spoke to me in my dreams. All of us have had those experiences. But you and I have an ability to have an encounter with God every day in his written word. And so those subjective experiences are submitted to and they come under submission to God's ultimate revelation uh, through the written word of God. And so we talked a little bit about that last week, how that then those revelations that we experience by hearing God's voice or how God speaks to us, uh, they're judged, they're, they're discerned, they're weighed. So I would just want to add just a little bit to, Lynn, what you're saying and that, you know, sitting right here and talking about these things and what you were sharing, you know, I really sensed the Holy Spirit just being with us at that time. And it's just yeah. like, man, <laughs> that is just so good, Lord, what you're doing. And so because that, you know, we are humans, you know, we only know things in part. And so because we know things in part, we have to go to the word. We have to go, you know, into, you know, 1 Corinthians where it talks about those prophetic things being judged. Mm -hmm. And we, we do that. I mean, we have a prophetic round table that we have, and there's words and dreams and visions that are brought before the round table. And there's between 14 and maybe 18 that come to the round table. They share the word. We pray about the word. We judge the word. Yep. And then we, we take that word, and then we bring that um, you know, before the round table, and we say, OK, so what's the interpretation of the word? So Lynn, I just really appreciate all um, that you're sharing with us today, because uh, even though um, we can see how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are doing a thing separate, but together mm -hmm. in everything that we do, because we're just mere men, yep. and we're just trying to get things right, and the only way we can get things right is going, you know, to God. Yeah. I think my prayer lately has been, Lord, don't let me mess this up, Amen. what you're doing. Because <laughs> I don't want to get yeah. in the way of what God is doing. And I think so often, it, as human beings, we can let pride get in the way or our own thoughts get in the way of what the Lord is doing and moving in this area. And I just, I don't want to be in the way. Like, remove me if you have to, God. Do whatever you want to. But... Um, even going along with what Lynn was talking about, like this mountaintop experience of the transfiguration and how yeah. awesome that would be. And I think so often as like me believing <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit is moving and he's still active and he's baptizing people, I just want more of that. And I'm like, more, Lord, I want more experiences with you. I want to see you face to face and speak to you and behold you and experience your presence in more powerful ways. And I think what he says is we have what is the words better we have a better we word have a more sure word a more sure word and it's like man do i long for the word of god like i long for an yeah. experience in the spirit and i think that should be our heart's cry is lord 
I want your word. I need your word. I, your I word. must yeah. have more of your word. Give me more revelation of your word. Um, and and so many times I feel like the charismatic side of it, we cry out for experiences, which are great and awesome and needed. I feel like needed in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But are we crying out for more of the word of God in our lives? Or are we just crying out for these mountaintop experiences? Okay. Can I add this? I think what makes it a more, the word, the written word of God, a more sure word is because Peter, James, and John, if you ask and interviewed each one of them and said, what was your experience? Each of them would have experienced something in a different way. That's true. Yep. They would have only, one of them would have seen one thing that really focused. And we know that Elijah and Moses also appeared. So maybe one of them focused on the robe that Elijah was wearing, you know? Yeah. Another one was looking at the beard of Moses, and I'm trying to be a little humorous there. Um, their ability to comprehend what was happening would have been a different experience to each one of them. And that's why Craig said, we only know in part because we're only seeing the part that we're seeing. The reason why the word of God is a more sure word is because it reveals the whole counsel of Amen. God. What God Amen. has revealed about himself in open disclosure. Amen. So it's not based upon my capacity to comprehend it. It's not based upon... Because at these round tables, we don't necessarily have the full interpretation right. or the yeah. application. How do we obey this? So many times when we're sharing these things, we just say, I, I felt like this is what God was saying, but I submit this mm -hmm. to you because as you pray into it, as you discern it, maybe there's something that I heard or I saw or I perceived that I'm missing, even though I'm the one that felt it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how sometimes these things blossom because we're, we, 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 again, we have received it and, and, you know, we're trying to communicate what we've heard, but then God will, will multiply that as it's submitted to other people and praying into it. And it's a beautiful thing. It is. And so then it's like, man, that's a, that, that is a way in which God wants us to obey this or that's a great application, or I never thought of yeah. that in interpreting it that way, because uh, that's essential in, in having yeah. words judged. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Like even at our last round table, we were talking, somebody submitted a dream and somebody submitted a prophetic word and it was almost like everything tied together. Yeah. And it was like one person, Craig had something about digging deep in the moles and then somebody else had something about the side door being blown out and we're like, whoa. And it was almost like, there was just this unity in the room that it was like, this mm -hmm. is what the Holy Spirit is saying through this dream and through this word. And there was such unity in with 14 people in yeah. a room. Yeah. And you would think 14 people, you get 14 different uh, ideas, 14 different interpretations of a dream. But we were all but one all and it was one. all like added together and piece yeah. by piece. You know, you had a part, you had a part, you had a part. And it was just incredible to watch the unity that happened in the room. And we talked about these dreams and prophetic words for about two and a half hours. And at the end of two and a half hours, we were like, we just want to worship Jesus yeah. right now yeah, because <laughs> the presence yeah. of the Lord was with us. Yeah. And I think going back to the Mount of Transfiguration, I mean, talking about they have a sure word, but, you know, think of those three disciples up there, you know, the Lord could be showing the same thing, but your revelation from each person can be different. I mean, it's true. So many times, you know, someone's given a sermon and someone's like, oh, this is what I got out of that. And you're like, I didn't get that at all, but this is what hit me. Yeah. And think about right. their conversations those disciples yeah. had of the Lord was just downloading this to me during that. And they're like, well, this is what I got. Did you see that? Yeah. And then the next one. And then they put it all together like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, again, we have a more sure word yeah. in the word. Well, I think that that's part of it, David, is that 
you know, some people would think that the prophetic is the end game. Yeah. It's, it's not the end game, but it's a part of. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that, you know, we want to make sure that as we're speaking that it's just a part of. Mm -hmm. It's not separate from. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, people, you know, try to, like, say the book of Revelation, try to interpret th this prophetic book. And it's instead of focusing so much on that prophetic book, focus on the Lord. Don't You don't need to be thinking, okay, I'm, this is what I'm computing that in a hundred years the Lord's coming back. Focus on the Lord. It doesn't matter when he comes back. If you're focusing on the Lord, you're aligned correctly. You'll you don't need to be worried about anything else. And uh, so, you know, we love the prophetic. I love getting prophetic words, but after I get a prophetic word, you know, where are we going? Be like, okay, does this line up with the word of God? Now what's my application based on the word of God? And um, it's just crucial. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we talk about, the warring on, yeah, warring the, word. on the word. Yep. Because it's, it's breaking those things down and those barriers down and those mindsets down that we have preconceived in our minds yep. because in some areas of our mind, you know, we don't allow God to be or be full in mm -hmm. us. And so we have to take those words that are given and bring them forth because we don't understand it all. Yeah. Can I share something um, and add to the conversation here? God wants that which is holy, and holy simply means something that he has separated unto himself for a unique purpose that we treat it with honor Amen. and that we treat it with appropriate value and we call it that which is sacred. And we can become so familiar with each other and our lives and, and our spiritual lives together. And if I'm not careful, I can commit what I call the sin of familiarity and I can discount the valuable grace that is working That's in true. the body of Christ. Yeah. And so just as we're called to esteem leaders and hold them into high standing, I also have to discern the body and I have to value uh, the deposit, the grace of Christ in each and every member of the body. And God wants to use people in different ways through their spiritual gifts. And, and part of that gifting expression is is God speaking through his people yeah. and so in the life of the spirit as we discuss these words we want to war by them we want to obey them it is simply us esteeming and valuing words that have come from God's heart amen yeah. I would just as I value my Bible and you know, I pray every time I read this, let your son be revealed to me Amen. Yeah. through the pages of this written word. I also know that my brothers and my sisters could be carrying the heart of God for me in a certain situation. And if I don't honor them, I'm not honoring what's in them. And this is a warning that Paul gave the believers at Thessalonica. He said, do not despise prophecy. How do you end up despising prophecy? Yeah, 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 that's just Greg. Yeah, 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 that's just Joe. David, ah, that's just Lynn. Yeah, true. Now, he didn't say that we don't judge those words. Matter of fact, the very next verse, he said this. He said, I want you to test all things and hold that to that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. But the first warning that he gave was not to despise it. In other words, don't demean it don't don't hold it to a, a lower degree um don't don't de devalue it in a way in which we think that it has no value just as i value the written word i also Amen. value the grace of god that of christ in the midst of his people and and his life being expressed to them through grace through gifts and one of those gifts is the prophetic and uh, so I want to have a heart that hears. 
And so I want to be able to personally hear God. I want to hear God through his written word. But I also, as God speaks to other people, time and time again, how my life has been enriched by people that said, can I just share with you something? I feel like God is speaking to me. And when I walked away from that moment, it was like I so desperately needed to hear that. Amen. Because I couldn't hear the Lord for myself because of my circumstance, God dropped a word in their heart, and it was an encouragement for me that I desperately needed, but I couldn't hear it because I was blinded by my circumstance in a dark moment, but God used brothers and sisters to encourage me and lift me up. And that's really, you know, the prophetic is about the revelation of, of God and his nature and his goodness and his power and his grace to our life Amen. to where we experience more of him. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I, I really don't know, David, what we can add to that. <laughs> I, don't, no. I don't know. It's just good. <laughs> we could go on for days here and just talk and it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, you can feel the presence of the Lord right here. right now. Yeah. yeah. It's just awesome. Uh, dad, thanks for being with us again. You Thank you. It's it. always a pleasure. Thank you. But uh, guys, thank you for being with us for again another Life in the Spirit and another Thursday. But we hope to see you next Thursday, and we love you guys. Thanks.